All right, here we go. Salute to everybody out there on Bleacher Report. Salute to all of my Knicks fans and Knicks Nation, Knicks Fan TV Nation. Once again, it is your boy CP the Franchise here checking in for episode two of our Knicks Fan Q&A, man. Happy to be back with you guys on this Tuesday afternoon. Hope you guys are keeping healthy and safe. We are two days away from the NBA trade deadline, February 9th, 3 p.m., and what will it be for the New York Knicks? That is what we're going to talk about today. I got three trades that the Knicks should look to make. Actually, four trades that the Knicks should look to make by the deadline. So we're going to talk about that. Knicks are also in Orlando tonight, taking on the Orlando Magic. Knicks coming in at 29 and 26 on the campaign. Coming off of one of their more impressive wins of the season uh, over the 76ers, 108-97, to 97, an impressive, impressive victory by the Knicks on so many levels. Number one, uh, this Philly team was stacked, fully healthy, coming into the Garden. They usually give the Knicks that work. You know, Knicks shorthanded, no Mitchell Robinson, R.J. Barrett, a late-game scratch, and you had so many unlikely heroes in that win over Philadelphia. Evan Fournier's 17 points in the fourth quarter. How about Miles McBride, seven points in the fourth quarter. Isaiah Hartenstein had been playing well during that four-game homestand, including uh, having a battle Joel Embiid all night when Jericho Sims was out in foul trouble. Of course, Jalen Brunson, who I call Captain Clutch, has continually been doing his thing, all-star snub, Needed to be named to the game, but you know what? It is what it is. Hopefully he'll get in as an injury replacement. And so the Knicks will be riding into Orlando, riding high against a fun Orlando team. You know, I like how this Orlando team is currently constructed. Obviously, the, the matchup to watch is going to be Julius Randle and Paolo Boncaro going at it. You know, how will the Knicks be able to contain Franz Wagner, who's been having a, a stellar sophomore season, building on top of his good rookie campaign? You got Bull Bull, those Knicks fans who are always excited about Bull Bull. Maybe he makes an appearance in this game tonight. You know, Orlando has a lot of size. I wonder how the Knicks will be able to contend with that. They had trouble with with uh, with teams with a lot of size in the past, whether it's the Clippers or the Raptors. But the, the Orlando also has a lot of size. When you look at Markel Fultz running the point at six foot four, and then you have Franz, you have Paolo at six ten, you have Wendell Carter. So uh, for that reason, you know they do protect the paint very well in this league. They are top ten paint protection team. Knicks being in the top ten in terms of points in the paint. So it'll be interesting to see what gives there. And then obviously off of the bench, you got gunners like Cole Anthony, Terrence Ross. You know, that Knicks bench is going to have to come to play, definitely play some defense because uh, even though that Orlando team is is below 500, they definitely have some statement wins during this campaign. They beat the championship Warriors twice. They beat the Celtics a few times. They beat the Mavs. They beat the Suns. So Orlando definitely has some quality wins on their uh, on their schedule. So the Knicks should not look at this team lightly by any means, man. So once again, salute to everybody in the chat, hit that thumbs up button for your boy. Even though there's none on Bleacher Report, that's that's our calling sign on Knicks Fan TV. Man, welcome to everybody in the chat. So, like I said, we're two days away from the trade deadline. What will the Knicks do? Now, you guys have already known that OG Ananobi was on my target list. He was my guy. I felt like this team needed a wing. 36% from three. Good corner three ball shooter. Shortest three in the league, multi versatile defender, something that we that we surely need. Knicks need a wing. We're, we're undersized in that department. We have one wing. His name is Cam Reddish. He's going to be shipped out of here fairly shortly. So we need that. But just today, Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports, a guy who's been on, on Bleach Report and, and hosted a QA in his own right. That's my guy, Jake Fisher. Jake Fisher says that the Knicks are no longer actively pursuing. OG Ananobi and and Ian Begley of F S N Y had earlier reported a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago rather that the Knicks were willing to part with up to three first round picks for OG. So never say never, but it seems like that shit might be sailing. It seems like that shit might be sailing. So OG's probably off the board. Now where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? I think Sadiq Bey could be 
a viable option, a viable replacement for Ananobi. No, he's not the defensive stalwart that Ananobi is touted to be. But Sadiq Bey absolutely is somebody that could help this Knicks team, whether it's at, on the bench or as a starter. I like his game offensively. He's a decent shooter, although statistically he hasn't been that way this year. He's kind of uh, taken a little bit of, of a step back, which is probably part of the reason why he's been moved to the Pistons bench. But nevertheless, a reclamation project that I think could help the Knicks. You know, the Knicks should still be in the talent search department. And you have Sadiq Bey, 23 years old, has played with Jalen Brunson and Villanova, knows Brunson's game. Their former teammates, they have that chemistry. A pro's pro. And so I think they should look at it, man. I, I think they, they should take a look at it. Loello in the chat says, my prediction is Knicks get Sadiq Bey. D. Billy says Cam and D. Rose for Sadiq Bay. And 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 shout out to D. Millie for that because uh my guy Ian Begley just today on his show had stated that uh not only are the Nuggets interested in Cam Reddish, but Detroit and the Knicks have been discussing Cam Reddish. So could Cam and Sadiq be trading places? Could Cam and Sadiq be trading places? Devin, David P in the chat says, you're not getting so deep without giving up a first. What would you guys be willing to give up? Is it a conditional first? Obviously, at 23 years old, you're not getting him for nothing. He's not a complete zero. He's just falling out of favor. And, and we'll see where Detroit wants to go there. But yeah, you, you probably would have to part with a, a conditional first round pick in this thing. So let's let's uh let's take a look at it, man. Let's go over to fans bow in the trade machine and see if we could uh see if we can get something done here for Sadiq Bay. Salute to everybody in the chat, salute to everybody on the Bleacher Report app. CP the franchise here weighing in. What are the Knicks gonna do at the deadline? All right, so let's see if we can make something happen here. Now, let's take a look and see how the contracts add up shout out to my guy alec burks alec burks as i've heard has been moved into the starting unit for the detroit pistons no surprise he's a bucket getter shout out my guy alec burks i right, scroll down here it's a little bit slow on the screen share but let's see if we can get to sadiq bay here salute 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 okay here we go sadiq bay 2.9 million let's trade him let's trade him over to the knicks uh, let's see. Where, where's Cam at? Is Cam all the way on the bench? Is, is Cam below Trevor Keels here on the, uh, let's see, Cam Reddish. Can't even find Cam. You, even, even on fan spell, Cam is at the bottom of the list. Let's see. All right. Let's see where we're going here. Okay. Here we go. All right. Trade that to the Pistons. And yeah, we may have to give up some draft capital here. Let's see. Let's put a pick here. Let's try try one of these conditionals here. Try one of these conditionals. 2023. This Washington pick now at 2023, there are some protections on there. Well, let's say lottery protect that one. I'm trying to get it cracking here. What's going on with this? Do I have that there? I don't see that. I don't know if it I don't know if it went through here or my thing is glitching out. Hang tight, hang tight. Okay. Let's try that out. Okay. Well, I don't I don't see where my uh where my lottery pick was here. I gotta try to get it. Obviously, you're not you're not gonna get Sadiq for Cam straight up. I'm trying to get that lottery pick in there. Uh let's try it again. Let's try it one more time before we bail on this thing. Not on protected. Okay, trade this to the Pistons. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. 
See how Detroit feels about this. Oh, and we got it. There we go. Sadiq Bay for Cam and the 2023 Washington pick. We got Sadiq Bay on the Knicks, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. CP the franchise on his trade machine vibe. What do you guys think about that in the chat? What, what do you guys think about that in the chat? B. Dickerson says, Bay is a perfect fit for the Knicks. Yeah, I think it would be. I think he would be. As long as they don't treat him like Cam. Just don't do it. Do him like Cam. HGG double triple V says Cam is literally better than, than Bay. Well, Cam's out of here, bro. I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. And I don't see that either. I think a lot of you guys overrate Cam Reddish. Uh, it's unfortunate what's happened with him. It's unfortunate that he's fallen out of favor with the Knicks. But he's on the he's on the move. And we'll see what happens there because that's another one on my list. The Knicks at the deadline should be getting rid of Cam Reddish. You got to trade him at this point. As Cam's camp has said, they have no interest in staying in a bench role even after the trade deadline. So it's either he's going to be traded or he's going to be cut. He's either going to be traded or he's going to be waived. Flex says it will be Cam and Detroit's own pick for Sadiq Bay. Yeah. Then the, and the Knicks do own uh one of Detroit's picks. They own, I'm just trying to pull this up here. Which Detroit, which year Detroit pick do they have? They have in 2023 the Pistons pick, which is uh which was which was top 18 protected. So they have that. Well, yeah, in, in terms of Cam, look, he wasn't playing here. Obviously, they had no intentions of playing with him. I thought they botched the trade. They completely botched the Cam Reddish trade. So he's going to be looking for a new home. And as, as we just uh, just said, before some of you guys just joining us, it looks like, according to Ian Begley, the Nuggets are interested. And uh, the Pistons, there may be some interest. So... Let's see what happens there. Jarrell Crawford in the chat said, listen, man, we're not getting anyone. Like I said, we just be talking. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. I mean, you know, you, you never know where, where Leon wants to go. Right now, this team is over 500. They're 29 and 26. Maybe it's not a starter upgrade, but the bench could certainly use an upgrade. If you're going for that second half run, you have one of the hardest schedules in the league. You try to make the playoffs right now. They're in the seventh seed. They're half game in, uh, behind Miami for sixth. They have two more games against Miami. They won the first one, which is a good one. You try to get the tiebreaker next one or the last one. But I think they could use some, some bench reinforcements. So the first pick I had was Sadiq Bey. First choice in terms of a trade was going out to Sadiq, Sadiq Bey. Number two. Could be, and shout out to James in the chat who says Vanderbilt is the guy we got to get. Well, that's my next one because this Cam Reddish has been a guy that doesn't has, hasn't has gotten any playing time. Obi Toppin continues to not get any playing time. And while I said on our first episode together that Obi needs to play, he needs burn, under this coach Tom Thibodeau, that is far from a reality. Just the way, obviously, Randall's been playing great. He's at an all-star level. Tibbs doesn't like to play smaller lineups. He had ample opportunity to do so, even in the Clipper game when Clippers were going small with Batum. They took the Zubox out. He still didn't want to go with Julius and Obi. So he has to get his 12 to 15 minutes a night. Do you go out there and call Danny Ainge and go for this Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt package? Do you go for it? The reports were that the Knicks were talking to the Jazz for an offer of Obi Toppin, Evan Fournier, a package of picks for Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt. Now, I'm, Malik, I'm a Malik Beasley guy. I like Beasley. I think he's a, he's a versatile scorer off your bench. 
Yes, defensively, he's not a strong defender at all. We know that. But obviously, as a bench bucket, I think he can help. I think he can absolutely help. And then you add in a guy like a Jared Vanderbilt. There we have our positional versatility. You bring him off the bench. He's averaging 8.7 rebounds. Nice wingspan. I liked him on Minnesota. Now he's kind of falling out of favor a little bit in Utah. But I think that would be a trade you might have to look at because when is Obi really going to get his opportunity to shine here with the Knicks? They've got one year left before he is a restricted free agent. And they're going to have to figure this out, man. Are they, is there room for him to play? LaShawn in the chat says, facts set OB free. John Talento, shout out John Talento. He says, we need defense. So let's let's, uh, let, let's take a look at this in the trade machine, man. See if we can work this thing out. Would it, would it work? And uh, earlier report, I don't know if this was a joke or what on, on ESPN, says D- Danny Ainge wants a ton of picks. So, or, or Danny Ainge wants too much. So traded Danny already on that stuff. Let's try this out. So let's try Fournier and Obi. So to everybody in the chat, Bleacher Report Q&A. You got Beasley going out. Good contract. 15 mil plus a team option for next year. And where is Vanderbilt on this list? Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt. Here we go, Vanderbilt. Two years, $4 million. Now, they say they want to pick. I mean, a pick or two. Man, that's tough. That's definitely tough. But, you know, with Danny, he's rebuilding. I'm not giving up an unprotected pick, that's for sure. That's for sure. The Dallas pick, that's that's that, even that is a little too high. Even that is a little too high. All right. I'll try this Detroit pick here. See how it goes. This Detroit protected. The protections on this Detroit pick are, like I said, top 18 protected. So not likely to convey in this upcoming draft. All right, so let's let's try that out there. And we got it. We got it done. Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt coming to the Knicks for topping 40A and a protected first. D knock in the chat says it's true. The Ainge always wants those picks. You gotta give them up. Mr. Q's in the chat says, now nah, we don't need Beasley. Give us Jordan Clarkson. I would love Clarkson. I would love Clarkson more than Beasley. I just don't think he's attainable. From what we're hearing, there's several teams that want Malik Beasley, including the Atlanta Hawks. That's another trade to look out for. Will they trade him to the Atlanta Hawks? The Suns, according to Malik Beasley, are interested. So he has a market. The Lakers are also uh, interested in Malik Beasley. Well, would you guys in the chat do this? I think the issue is, and we were talking about this on, on Knicks Fan TV last night. Shout out to JD and Alex. The issue is a player like Obi, whose ceiling has not yet been tapped into, is limited here. But what are you giving the Utah Jazz? Will he be able to go there and blossom? And would you regret that? That's the the hard part about an OB trade. Is like, yes, he's being blocked here, and the future looks really bleak. But damn, we see what he can do when he's given a lot of minutes in the starting role. It's tough to see giving that up for two supporting cast members. But nevertheless, on the Knicks side of things, I believe these guys can help. I slot Beasley into... 
um, Deuce McBride's role, and I put Vanderbilt into Obi's role. LaShawn Paul, would Tibbs even play Beasley? Absolutely. He plays defense. We play defenders here on the New York Knicks. Absolutely. Uh, John Talento says he's not doing the, the jazz trade. 1025 Goody says throw in Tibbs. <laughs> D. Milley says we need a, a shooting guard to support Brunson, in my opinion. I hear that. H double G triple V says we should call the Spurs for Devin Vassell. I can't see Devin Vassell being, being that, being that. Flex seven says forward that package to Leon so he can learn how it's done. Is Leon Rose once again falling asleep at the trade deadline? Leon, what's going on? What are we doing? You're saying you don't want OG? That's my guy. You don't want OG? What are we doing here? Watch, I, I mean, Jake claims OG's not on the Brooklyn radar. I'm not so sure. I, I think the Nets are still going to be trying to retool and try to keep KD happy. I see either Van Fleet or OG going to that team. Also, you got teams like the Grizzlies and the Pelicans in the OG Ananomi market. H four N L O N T T one in chat says Miles Turner. I don't see no. Nah, I don't see the Knicks going after Miles Turner. I don't see that happening. Uh, Giants more rings. Ob gets more playing time. I think I lost this. Ob gets more playing time. He'll be nice. Yeah, that that that's a risk. But is he gonna get it here? And the answer is no. Not under this coach. It goes against this coach's principles, unfortunately, because I want to see the kid playing. I want to see the kid playing. Stu the Don says, keep Obi. I like, I like you. I'm with you, Stu. But is he ever going to get the playing time here? Ian Evans says, any other trade targets, another guard maybe. You know what? There was a report out there today from Amico Hoops on Twitter. I believe it's, it's uh, Sam Amico. Sam Amico, who covers the NBA for Hoops Wire formerly of Fox Sports, he claims that Josh Richardson could be had for an expiring contract and a second-round pick. I do it. I like Josh Richardson. I think he can help. 6'6", shoots the ball well. Very good from the mid-range. 50% from the mid-range, Josh Richardson, in the 87th percentile among guards. Shooting 37% from three. Respectable numbers as a shooter, can play some defense, stubborn, tough, veteran presence, play for a number of teams, then they play for every team in the NBA. I think he can help, but I think his market will be vast. There's a lot of teams looking for a guy like that. It could be the Lakers, could be the Cavaliers, could be Brooklyn. I think there's going to be a lot of teams after Josh Richardson. That's the only problem. Will another team come in and offer... More to the Spurs? Will teams wait for him to possibly be waived and then jump into a bidding war? We'll see. But based on what they're looking for, if according to Sam Amico, it's just a veteran and a pick, then here's where I go. Let's go back to the trade machine. I I like wearing my GM hat here, man. I like this. I like this type of stuff here. Okay. So here's what we do. Because since Leon is asleep... Here's where, here's where I'm going. I'll, I'll start doing the work for Leon. They just got to pay me a little bit more. Shout out to everybody in the chat right now on this Tuesday night, two days until the trade deadline. So if what they say is true for a guy like a Josh Richardson, like I said, I bring him off the bench. I put him in McBride's role. And I get a veteran presence for this final 20-some-odd games left in the season and into the playoffs. And here's where I go. Derek Rose. Thank you for your services. We enjoyed you taking us to the playoffs. You were a big reason, big part of that. We appreciate you for that. We'll send you to the Spurs. Maybe they can negotiate a buyout or something. And then you could go wherever you want. Maybe you go to maybe maybe you go to Chicago or something. All right. So I give the Spurs D Rose and a 2024 second round pick in exchange for Josh Richardson. Let's get it done. Success. Three successful trades. The Knicks need to hire me into the front office. There's a report today that they are offering a minority stake in the team. So 
Uh, maybe we could, uh, you know, throw some dollars together, get that stake, and then get me into the front office somehow. Josh Richardson for Derrick Rose and a second-round pick from the Miami Heat. What do we think about that in the chat? What do we think about that in the chat? Zaheem says, I feel like the Knicks not going to make a move. Well, have faith. I think, at the very least, Cam is a goner. You see what they get for him. And then you go from there. The Black Wolf says, I'm starting to lose faith in Leon. Yeah, what do you guys think of the chat, man? That was also a topic of conversation on KFTV. Are you starting to lose faith in Leon Rose? Are you starting to lose faith in Leon Rose? Or are you of the mindset where you say, they're not going to gamble, they're not going to overpay for anything for a lackluster market right now. So stand pat and go with what you have. What do you think? What do you think about that? Mad King Ray says, I say we trade Randall and see what we can get for him. I mean, what are you really going to get for Randall right now? He's playing like an all-star. I don't see this regime trading Randall at this moment. I get it. You know, I get it. You're, you're fearful. Uh, the Knicks are in uh, that mid-tier of mid. No man's land, as they like to call it. But what are you, what are you really going to get for him? Four years left on his deal. Cuckoo in the chat says, Kelly Oubre has an expiring contract and he fits the need of a wing defender. I've never really been a Kelly Oubre guy, man. Honestly. What if you want to take a flyer on him? Expiring contract. I guess it wouldn't be so harm. B. Dickerson says, I wouldn't do that, honestly. Do what? Uh, Josh Richardson for D. Rose in a second round pick? I would do that. Do that in a second. I mean, D. Rose's days are done. He's not getting any burn here. Second round pick, what's the big deal? They got 100 picks. I'd do it. I think Josh Richardson could help this team. T. Roberts, you ain't got that much money for that stake, in my opinion. I said, I said we got to pony up together, man. You got to cash at me and everybody else in the chat, and we'll make a we'll make a proposal. NYG says, I don't hate that Jazz trade. Yeah, it wouldn't be too bad. It's, it's only if Danny Ainge accepts. Does Danny does Danny accept, or does he hang up? Mister Q says, I'll take Spurs center y- Jakob Pertl. Um, I think that's out of our range. You know, we, we got a, a trillion centers right now. I don't see them doing that. EJ Key, CP for GM. Appreciate you, man. Definitely appreciate it, my man. The chat, Adrian in the chat says Cam for Bones. Um, no, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the Nuggets doing that. I don't see the Nuggets doing that. I'm actually surprised that they would even put him out there on the market. But no, I, I don't see uh Cam Reddish just holding that much value, unfortunately. So unfortunately for the Knicks, they're going to uh, be selling low. They're going to be selling low, man. Randy, shout out to Randy. He says, stay with the current roster till a disgruntled star comes along. Okay. You can certainly do that. I don't know if you guys are waiting for, are you waiting on Embiid? Are you waiting for the Phoenix run to be over with? What do you guys think about that? Is 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 a Booker run in play? What do you guys think about that? NYG says, you think we can make a run at Levine? Uh, reports from ESPN just yesterday said he's not on the market. So I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Giants more ring says D Rose needs to be traded to a good team. We can't do him dirty like that. Uh, but maybe maybe a buyout is possible. You know, maybe it's, I wouldn't, I, I, I understand that comment. I appreciate that comment. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to send D Rose to, to, to purgatory. Maybe a buyout is possible or he doesn't even have to go to San Antonio. He doesn't have to go to the Alamo. Then he can go somewhere, go to Chicago, you know, go to LA, maybe go to the Clippers. What do you guys think? And Dinox says, Gary Trent would be the best option for a trade that actually works. Well, the question is, how much are you going to pay Musai Ujiri? And then how much are you going to pay Gary Trent Jr.? Because um, his contract is, is uh, let's take a look at it. 
Let's take a look at it. Right here on Spanspo, Gary Trent Jr. Contract. Let's do our Googles here and take a look. Let's take a look as a family, shall we? Okay, Gary Trent Jr. Has, he's making 17 mil this year. And then he's got a player options for 18 and a half for next year. So you got to figure he's going to opt out. He's having a good year this year. You got to figure he's going to opt out. And look to go get a bag in the 20s. What about Caruso? I would love Caruso. I would absolutely love Caruso on this team. He's a prototypical Tibbs player for me. I would love Caruso. Absolutely. Uh, Nickerbock Avenue says, release Rose Nose and straighten for him. Yeah, you, you're probably right on that. You, you're probably right on that. Mr. Q's Gary Trent Jr., too small, streaky shooter. <laughs> yeah, 10 25 Goon. You have to wrap this one an arm and a leg. Yeah, Ujiri and Danny Ains are not playing any games. You want their guys, you're going to have to pony up. You want their guys, you're going to have to pony up. Agents Eco, Caruso, and Bay are ideal targets. Yeah, th- this is my order, man. Just to recap, my three trade targets Sadiq Bay. Number one. Number two, you look into the Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt for, for top and, and Fournier deal. And number three, you look into Josh Richardson, although I think his market uh, will be a lot more um, competitive than the others. And Beasley as well. I think Beasley's market will be competitive. You know, I, I think Beasley's market will be competitive. Preston in the chat says, let's bring back Mello for a year. Ah, I'm good on that. Mello's done his days, man. You guys, you guys really want Mello in there? Come on, man. Come on, man. Mello has done his days, man. All right, who else we got? What else we got in the chat, man? Knicks and Magic coming up tonight. Knicks on the road against Orlando. Then they go to Philly. And then uh, they wrap up at home in the Jazz, man. Give me, give me a record prediction for this week. What do you guys think is, is will be the Knicks record? Eleven detours says bring back Mike Woodson. Yeah, shout out to Mike Woodson, man. Indiana got a statement victory over number one Purdue over the weekend. Big win for Woodson. You can tell those kids love playing for him. He's having a great time on the college scene. Seems like just overall great guy. Seems like overall great guy, and uh, a lot of Knicks fans. Certainly miss Mike Woodson. Yeah, yeah, Mello's done. HGCP for the front office. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Flex says Charlotte's having a fire sale. What about someone from there? Who do you want? Somebody had mentioned Kelly Oubre. You want Terry Rozier? You want Scary, Scary Terry in here? I'm good on Gordon Hayward. He's finished. See what Terry, Scary Terry's uh, contract is looking like. Scary Terry Rozier. Let's see how. Uh, see what he's looking like. I can pull it up on my. It might be a little bit faster. Am I? Uh, okay, Terry Rozier. Yeah, you're making tw- twenty four million next uh, next season. No, twenty three million, twenty four million over the next two years. There's no way the Knicks are taking that on. No way. I can't see that happening. Can't see that happening, man. Uh, Let me zoom zoom in a little bit here. Here we go. Yeah, so as you see here, he's making $21 this year, $23 next year, and then $24 the year after that. Steep, steep, steep. Manny Jackson, being a Knicks fan is so hard. I'm waiting for a trade. I bet we do nothing. Look, it's certainly possible, man. But, I mean, would you rather than mortgage the future for nominal gains or sit back and be patient? Make a run in Knicks life versus make a run for Joe Harris and Buddy Heald. I don't see it. I don't see the Knicks and Nets doing business anytime soon. 
thinking the Nets were trading uh, Joe Harris. It's going to be for something substantial. They want to impress KD. They want to put a formidable and competitive team around Kevin Durant. I don't think anybody that the Knicks would be willing to sh- to trade would offer uh, that for the Nets. I don't see it. And Woj has reported today that uh, KD and the Nets are meeting to discuss the future of the franchise. KD has not requested a trade. We also heard from Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports that the Phoenix Suns would be interested, would be expected to pursue KD again should he want out. But that's another thing. You know, the other thing is how much are teams really willing to spend on a guy like an OG Ananobi if a KD may be available in the offseason or at the deadline? Who knows? You know, the Brooklyn thing has has impacts not just between Brooklyn and Dallas, but, you know, for several teams that could be interested in Kevin Durant. What do they do at the deadline? How much are they willing to pay for lesser quality players? Yeah, Mr. Q's Joe Harris is a scrub. Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't be my first choice. You know what I'm saying? He would not be my first choice. But, like I say, people, we are two days away from the trade deadline. What will the Knicks do? As we've heard, OG Ananobi seems to be off the table. Looks like they're taking their foot off the gas on that one. But I have my ideas. Number one, try to get Sadiq Bey. Could a Cam Reddish and a protected pick get it done? Number two, go after Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt for Obi Top and Evan Fournier and a protected pick. And number three, try to get Josh Van, uh, Josh Richardson for an expiring contract and a second round pick. Does a Derrick Rose do it for San Antonio and a second? Who knows? And then lastly, trade Cam Reddish. You know, just just be done with the Cam experiment. Cut your losses. You traded a protected first round pick for him. See what you can get. And and you move on from there and learn from it. Because as an organization, from 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 front office to coach, the Cam trade was a complete waste of time and a complete bust. Not just from him as a player, but how the organization handled it with their lack of a plan and lack of clear development for Cam Reddish. They tried to bring in a reclamation project and they had him sitting on the bench for 50% of the time that he was here, maybe even more. So learn from that experience. And as Ian Begley, our guy Ian Begley is reporting, uh, the Nuggets are interested and maybe the Pistons. So as that's why I say in a Bay trade, is that something that these two teams could look at? So we'll see. But nevertheless, as I said, man, Knicks in Orlando tonight. Uh, you can catch me on YouTube.com slash KnicksFanTV for post game live. We'll be breaking it all down. Highlights, analysis, call the reactions, the whole nine yards. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at CP the Franchise. You can act, also catch us on those same platforms at KnicksFanTV. I want to shout out uh, Bleacher Report for once again having me on. And let's do this again, man. This is number two. And hopefully this is uh, number two of many, man. But for everybody that joined us tonight, definitely appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you share this video. Leave a comment on this video afterwards. And we'll catch you guys next time, man. CP the Franchise, I'm out of here. Peace.